Have you ever had the fear that your car's battery will run out before you reach your destination? If so, then you're like many people around the world. Range anxiety is real. But maybe soon we can have electric highways that charge our cars as we travel. In this episode of Transforming Business, we ask, is infrastructure for EVs developing too slow? And why is Germany falling behind in developing charging infrastructure? Well, we're in the German state of North Rhine-Westphalia, which is home to popular German cities like Cologne, Dortmund and Dusseldorf. It's also home to the highest number of EVs in the country. And not too far from Cologne is one of the largest fast-charging parks. It has over 60 ultra-fast charging points from Tesla and Dutch company FastNed. It also has a battery swap station from Chinese automaker NIO. We asked drivers passing through about their charging experience. Als Tesla-Fahrer finde ich die gut. Ähm, als ich andere Elektroautos gefahren bin, ist eine Katastrophe. Ähm, also das größte Problem ist, wenn man nicht an einem Tesla Supercharger lädt, ähm, dann hat man tausend verschiedene Ladekarten, die man braucht. Man weiß nicht, was man bezahlen soll. Ähm, die Preise sind astronomisch. Ich glaube, dass sich das quasi von Woche zu Woche verbessert. Being in like Western Europe or Northwestern Europe, the infrastructure is there. But then if I have to go for a longer trip, maybe to the South of Europe or maybe to Eastern Europe, I think I might face a lot of challenges. Many people talked to me off camera as well. They shared frustrating tales of broken chargers and long waiting times. So is the charging infrastructure in Germany enough? We do have enough charging points for the number of EVs we have at the moment. This is Rebecca Heckmann, one vice president at Elexon, a German company that makes charging points for other companies and public spaces. I think it is not only about the charging infrastructure itself, but also about the whole power grid in Germany. The electricity grid worldwide needs an update, and this has a fat price tag. For the EU, 584 billion euros are needed to upgrade the current system and digitalize the grids by 2030, making them smart. They will use software to match supply and demand. But consumer patterns also play a huge role in deciding the future of EVs. I'm sure you know how Germans love their gas guzzlers. And that's because the modern combustion engine was born here. Legacy automakers like Mercedes, Volkswagen and BMW are a huge part of the German economy. Letting go and adopting a new kind of personal car is a challenge in its own way. But it's happening slowly but surely, from 2019 to 2021. The numbers increased by a factor of 10, from 3% to 30% of EV registrations. So in a way, once it happened, it happened very quickly. Uh, but if you compare the number of new registrations with our climate goals, then we are not fast enough by far. We would need to sell a lot more electric vehicles per month than we are currently selling. But would you buy an EV if the infrastructure threatens to slow you down? And what about charging in the rest of the world? How about industry leaders like China or the US? You're probably surprised by who's on the top spot. South Korea leads with the most amount of charging stations per 1,000 EVs in 2022. The Netherlands is accelerating and comes in second. China is at number three. In pure numbers, more than half of all slow charging stations in the world are in China. It's not a surprise seeing that the industry leader has been working on EVs for more than two decades. Chinese technology is credited for making a lot of EV infrastructure possible, be it battery swap stations or manufacturing those batteries. And China's biggest rival, the US, is coming close with new innovative technology. Forget charging stations, we're talking about developing fully electrified roads and highways. Here's what companies like the Ray in the US are working on. Imagine a highway in which power electronics are fitted two inches below the road's surface. And this is connected to the electricity grid installed on roadsides. It would be able to generate up to 200 kilowatt and transmit it to your car. There must be a receiver underneath the car for it to receive the electricity while traveling. So basically this technology in an ideal scenario gives you infinite range and eliminates range anxiety. Because as soon as you are on a roadway that is electrified, 
uh, you can move forever or until you fall asleep on the on the wheel. Also, we're not talking about electrifying every single meter of road. It's clear that it suffices to electrify just a small fraction of all the kilometers of roadways that are out there, and more specifically, the roads that are, uh, you know, more heavily used. Currently, efforts like these are underway. In Michigan, a pilot project is going to be completed soon and will cost the state $1.9 million. But before we lean towards cutting-edge technology, we must test out existing infrastructure. Let's turn to Latin America, where Brazil and Mexico are seeing a boom in the EV market. The situation is developing slowly, but the result is big. The Association of Latin American Mobility Sustainable se ha llevado una actividad muy interesante que se llevó el año pasado y es la ruta eléctrica. Entonces se hicieron un ejercicio y es salir desde, desde Chile y llegar hasta México en vehículos eléctricos y ver qué se puede. Entonces tú ya puedes cruzar Latinoamérica en un vehículo eléctrico porque tienes una ruta eléctrica. Entonces tienes cada tantos, cada, cada tantos kilómetros un lugar donde puedes cargar tu vehículo. Entonces ver cómo hasta tú ya puedes cruzar de un país a otro eh, en un vehículo eléctrico. Such developments are joint efforts. Governments in the region come together with organizations supporting electric mobility in the region. Half of this route was already launched in 2022. This model can serve as a great example for regions all over the world. In Europe, traveling across countries is easy, but can be tough because the infrastructure is different wherever you go. Here's what drivers in Germany said about range anxiety in long distance traveling. <lacht> ja, die berühmte Reichweitenangst, natürlich, die hat jeder Elektroautofahrer. Ne? Wir waren jetzt ähm, ja, vorgestern, jetzt oder was? War gerade, ne? Ja. Letzte Woche haben wir, haben wir mehr oder weniger einen Rekord. Wir sind mit einem Prozent an der Ladestation angekommen. Ja. Ähm, ich weiß, Eben, der fährt auch noch ein paar Kilometer mit null Prozent. Auch wenn man einen Benzin erfährt, gibt es die Leute, die einfach bis zum roten Strich fahren und sagen, ich weiß, ich schaffe das noch. Und die, die immer schon vorher tanken. It gives you a bit of uh, anxiety, especially driving through Germany, because most of the time there's some road work happening and the exit that you're supposed to take is closed and then you have to take like a 20 kilometer detour just to get to the charging station. Many people in Germany pointed out that problems like these hinder them from switching to EVs. Customer arrive, the charge point is not working. This is not acceptable. So we need to ensure charge points publicly, especially the fast ones, are working everywhere, every time. That's the first point. Make it reliable. Make it easy to use. Miriam has a PhD in electric vehicles. She says that in the future, all EVs will be charged at home overnight with a private charger in your garage, for example. In the night, there's less pressure on the grid and you can avoid waiting lines at charging stations. But in the day... This is where you mimic the existing uh, fueling stations. Where you go, you plug and you charge in 10, 15 minutes. So in the future, predominantly you charge at home and you complement it by a network of fast chargers along travel corridors and maybe also some urban hubs in cities. On average, people in Germany drive 37 kilometers per day by car. Now, if you have an EV with 300 kilometers range, then you're good. You don't need to worry about charging every day. But what if the closest charging station is far? your driving distance increases significantly. To avoid this, countries need to be faster with developing infrastructure. But let's talk about who handles this development. Charging infrastructure is obviously an interaction between uh, private investors um, and the market and uh, a government, both on the national as well as on local and regional levels. So it is a complex mix of players. In Germany, one of these players is the current ruling coalition, which includes the Green Party. They previously said they want to have 15 million electric vehicles on the roads by 2030. But with subsidies phased out and major car makers rolling back EVs, the government's dream feels far. We need more policies uh, on the national level to speed up the uptake of electric cars. It doesn't help that we just cut the generous purchase subsidies that were in place until the end of last year. Um, we argue for a reform of the car taxation scheme and uh, of basically making fossil fueled cars more expensive. 
This model has seen success in Norway, where you kind of shift consumer patterns by taxing one commodity more than the other. But this model isn't in place in Germany. The government had set aside money for charging stations, but it was underutilized. Last year, they earmarked close to 2 billion euros for charging infrastructure, but only ended up spending less than a quarter of that money. Some of the bottlenecks include issues with acquiring raw material and general slow expansion of the electricity grid. Building a charging station is more work than you'd think. The installation of charging stations requires a variety of services. So I think first of all, um, there's the electrical connection. For many AC charging stations, this takes place in the low voltage grid. This is then less work. However, it often requires additional power to be provided by the distribution grid operator. So um, we are back at the challenges in Germany with the, um, with the power suppliers. At the start of the episode, we asked if charging infrastructure is being developed too slowly. In Germany, for example, the issues with charging are complex. It's a question of grid capacity, subsidies and investment. In the rest of the world, it's progressing, slowly but making great strides. And add to all this the range anxiety that people have? This shows that the car and infrastructure industries have their work cut out. With all this information, the question is, would you buy an EV?